Welcome. In the last video I walked you through how to use the Print Digest for case law research if you had a topic and key number, or at least one good case on point. In this video we'll look briefly at the other two techniques, using a descriptive word index and using a detailed topic outline. If you aren't so fortunate as to have a good topic and key number to start your research with, you'll probably need to turn to the descriptive word index. Each West Digest has a multi-volume descriptive word index located at the end of the set. The descriptive word index is a detailed alphabetical listing of subjects, headings, and important legal terms with a reference to where corresponding information is located within the digest. If you're working on a research assignment and you've done your preliminary analysis, you should have a list of searchable terms. These terms may include possible causes of action, defenses, types of relief sought, persons, places, or things involved. As an aside, when you're developing your list, remember to think in terms of legal concepts and legal relationships, and not simply facts. Once you have a list of searchable terms, the key is to look up those terms in the descriptive word index and see what topics and key numbers the index points you to. For example, if my issue has to do with rescission of a contract because of a unilateral mistake, I immediately have four searchable terms, contract, rescind or rescission, mistake, and unilateral mistake. It can't be overstated that you need to be flexible when using the descriptive word index to locate topics and key numbers to search. If your first search term doesn't work, that doesn't mean that your issue isn't covered by the topic and key number system. Try again. Not every term is indexed, so this might be frustrating at first. Just as a refresher from the last video, the first step in using the topic and key number system for research is to locate the appropriate digest. Here, since we're interested in Illinois, we'll use the Illinois Digest Second in your library. All academic libraries in Illinois and most court libraries will have a print set of Illinois Digest. It's red. You can't miss it. Back to our regularly scheduled lesson. So here's a shot of the descriptive word index at the end of the set of Illinois Digest Second at Loyola. Going back to our premises liability example from the first two lessons, let's say that I'm looking for cases that talk about what constitutes a breach of duty in a slip and fall case. I immediately have three obvious search terms, two very broad terms or concepts, premises liability and duty or breach of duty, and one more narrow one, slip and fall. Let's start with the narrow one and see where that leads us. So I'm going to look for the volume that contains the indexed terms SL for slip and fall. That appears to be volume 67. One side note, the white supplements that you see are overgrown pocket parts. When pocket parts get too big to fit in the back of a book, they get replaced by standalone supplements. If you check a bound volume, you should always check the pocket part as well. If the pocket part has been replaced by a standalone supplement, well, you know what to do. I've turned to the pages that begin with the indexed term slavery and ends with the indexed term social. In this instance, the pertinent indexed term turns out to be slipping. Under slipping, it tells me that if I'm interested in slipping as it relates to premises liability, I should go elsewhere in the descriptive word index itself and see the heading or index term premises liability and then look for slips and falls there. It also tells me that if I'm interested generally in cases that talk about proximate cause, I should proceed to the topic of negligence, key number 1228. I might make a note of that in my research log. In the meantime, let's go look up premises liability, slips and falls, and see what happens. So now I've moved on to the volume of the descriptive word index, which contains index terms starting with the letters PO and ending with the index terms beginning with SH. I've turned to the page containing the heading Premises Liability and the subheading Slips and Falls in general. Here you'll see that if I'm interested in breach of duty generally, I should go to the volume in the digest containing the topic of negligence, key number 1095. But if I'm looking specifically for slip and fall cases involved in specific factual situations like floors, stairs, or ice and snow, I should go look at those specific key numbers. If I had a slip and fall case involving a stairwell, I'd probably look at both. This is a very basic example, and using the descriptive word index isn't always that elegant. Remember, the key is that not everything is an indexed term. So if a term doesn't seem to be indexed, reach back into your list of search terms and try the next best one. Last but not least, let's talk about using a detailed topic outline to find cases in the topic and key number system. If you know the topic that you're interested in, you can go directly to the detailed topic outline 
located at the beginning of each digest topic to locate the key numbers most relevant to your search. Looking through the outline can be helpful in clarifying issues or raising concerns that you hadn't thought of. But handle this approach with care. It can be time consuming and confusing, especially if you don't already have a basic background in a given legal area. On the flip side, this is actually the technique that seasoned practitioners use. A practitioner with experience in using the topic and key number system will know, basically, what cases are covered in which topics. So a seasoned practitioner might approach the problem using top-down analysis. He or she might say, I know that I'm interested in cases involving negligence and the liability for an accident that occurred on my client's premises, and I know that the accident involved a slip and fall. So using that approach, I'll start with the digest topic negligence and work my way down from there. Negligence, premises liability, breach of duty, slip and fall. Now that I know what the relevant key number is, I'll go look up cases there. Before I go, let me leave you with a few thoughts from the whole series that either didn't fit in anywhere else or simply bear repeating. If you don't know already, you can search using West Topic and Key Number System online using Westlaw. You'll find the Topic and Key Number System under the Tools tab on the Westlaw homepage. Also, be aware that the success of the Topic and Key Number System inspired Bloomberg and LexisNexis to create their own indexing and abstracting systems, so look for those online as well. Third, let me point out that the Topic and Key Number System is not an ideal system for case law research. The truth is that there is no ideal system. The truly excellent method involves using multiple techniques to ensure completeness and accuracy. So, for example, you might run a terms and connectors search and then, having identified a topic and key number that comes up in multiple cases, go look at those cases with the topic and key number system. Finally, a couple brief points to reiterate. First, not everything is a topic. That's one reason that it's best to start with a descriptive word index. You might be sure that premises liability has to be its own topic, but it's not. If you go looking for the volumes containing premises liability and strike out, look the term up in the descriptive word index. Lastly, never mistake an editor's summary or headnote for the text of an actual case. Citing to or quoting language from a headnote can destroy your credibility and undermine your argument. So that's it for this lesson. If you're interested in learning more about how to research in print, we also have videos on using secondary sources and encyclopedias in print, and on using annotated codes in print. Be sure to check out those as well. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. We're always here to help.